ピカチュウかわいいねにゃーピカチュウうたてねえピカチュウおやすみねないないね Hello everybody! <laughs> I hope you're doing well. Sorry about the appearance of things around here.、Um, depending on whether you watch the channel or not, you may or may not know that I'm actually moving soon. So,、uh, unfortunately, a lot of my furniture has been packed away, ready to move. Things are in boxes, and、uh, I don't really have a chair right this minute, so hence me sitting on my skateboard. So, welcome back to、uh, Japanese for Retro Gamers Part 2.、Um, if you haven't seen the first video, I would definitely recommend you check that one out first because some of the phrases and words that I'm going to be using in this video are covered in that one. Also, just as a reminder, you can download the、uh, hint sheets for all of these videos from the links in the video description. They're on my Patreon, and what that will give you access to is a PDF that's on one side of A4 paper. I mean, you can conveniently fold this up should you come to Japan and you'll have it there、uh, for reference. So, in today's video, I want to、uh, start using some of those words and so forth to extend your、uh, Japanese vocabulary and so forth to get access to things that may be locked away in cabinets, for example, or in display cases. And also just extend your uh, general uh, knowledge of what things are called in Japanese and that kind of thing. So,、um, and also I'll be sharing two of my best bargains that I have found whilst I have been living in Japan since 2020. So,、uh, that's to look forward to. So, without further ado, let's get on with it. Okay, let's start with just a few extra words about. Boxes for games and this kind of stuff, and what's inside games as well. So, one of the things that I didn't cover in the last video was, for example, you might see something、uh, that's in a display case, but you can't see the back of it, for example. And you know, sometimes that's important to people. Generally, for me, when I'm buying box games, I want them to be at least in fair condition. I, I'm not a, a collector of mint games by any stretch of the imagination. So, you might want to see the back. Now, what's the back of something called? Well, I'm sure there is more than one word for this. I'm not pretending that my Japanese is fluent, perfect, native level. So, but、uh, I always refer to the back of the box as the uramen. Uramen. So that means the back of something. So that can mean the back of a sheet of paper. And I've always taken it that、uh, you can also use that for the back. And I've always been understood. So this is known as the uramen. Okay. And the front of something, just by the way, is omote. Omote. Okay, so that just means the front of something. So, another word that is really important is like what's inside kind of thing. What's inside the box, Vicky? Well,、um, in this case, it's, it's a video game. So, <laughs> but basically, the inside of something is known as the naibu. So, you can refer to the contents of something as being the naibu.、Uh, maybe those words alone don't really、uh, help you much. So, say for example, you're in a store. You've asked, does it contain something? So you might have used said to me, Shoga Ari Maska, does it have the instructions, the manual? Okay, we learned that in the first video. But what if you want to ask, how is something? So the phrase you want to use is, do des ga. Do des ga. Okay, and that literally means, how is it? It can also mean, how are you? And other things as well. But in this case, we're using it as, how is it? Okay. So. What we need to do is then say pair it with、uh, one of the words that we use. Say, for example, the uramen. So, what you want to do is you want to say, uramen wa do desu ka? Uramen wa do desu ka? How is the back? Okay. If you want to slightly extend the word in case you're not being understood, or the phrase rather, in case you're not being understood, not that I've ever had this problem, you can then extend it to include the word condition. And what you want to do is you want to take the object, okay, so that's the uramen in this example, okay, that's the object, and you want to ask about the condition of that object. And what you want to do is add no jotai to the object. So in this case, uramen no jotai wa. どうですか Uramen no jotai wa どうですか 
So what's the condition of the back like, essentially, is what you're saying. How is the condition of the back? Okay, so, for example, you want to ask about the condition of the instructions. Setsumeisho no jotai wa do desu ka? Setsumeisho no jotai wa do desu ka? What's the condition like of the instruction manual? So, adding no jotai to the object, okay, is asking about the condition of something, is connecting condition to that object. So, instructions, the software, the box, for example, okay? So, it's uh, quite a bit more to ask, but if you practice, you can do it. So, um, or if you if they're not willing to answer the, the, the question or you're not sure if you're going to understand their answer, which it's all well and good being able to ask these things in uh, Japanese, but maybe you won't understand their answer, you might ask them to show you it instead. So what you can say is, Uramen o mizete kudasai. Uramen o mizete kudasai. So basically that means, please show me the back. Okay? Or you might want to say, Setsumeisho o mizete kudasai. Setsumeisho o mizete kudasai. So it literally means please show me the instructions. It's very polite. People will understand you and they're going to want to make a sale ideally. So I don't think you're going to have any problems convincing them to do so. So just to recap, the back of a box is known as the uramen or the back of something is generally known as the uh, uramen. The front of something is generally the omote. There are other words that you can use but let's stick with omote. Okay, that's like the face of something. And the insides of something is known as the naibu. Some useful phrases there. So, um, I hope that helps. So now let's look at one of the bargains that I have found since coming to Japan. Now, I love Disney. I love Disney-based 2D platformers for the Mega Drive, for the Super Nintendo and so forth. And this is a very late release for the Super Nintendo or Super Famicom. Donald in Maui Mallard. And... Um, I love this game. I remember playing at a friend's house. We both had Super Nintendos. Uh, he had quite a few more games than I did. For example, he had Doom for the Super Nintendo, a port that, bizarrely, I actually quite like. It's not by far the perfect port, but I actually quite like it. And one day I'd like to pick that up, but let's concentrate on this game. Late release, late 96, I believe, maybe even early 97, I think, in Europe. And um, yeah, I've been looking for this game for a while. I've seen it quite a few times loose. Uh, usually you can pay about 1,500 to 3,000 yen for a loose copy. I think 3,000 yen is a bit too much though, to be honest with you. Uh, uh, generally speaking, I've seen good copies for about 1,800 yen out there, so uh, be patient. But for these uh, Disney games, I like to buy box games. Um, obviously, I don't pick up the ones that aren't very good, but this is a good one in my my opinion. Now, this is not a mint copy, but it's quite close. There's a little bit of a ding on the top there, and uh, there's a little bit of a graze on the box that you might see there. But overall, the condition is excellent. Um, and inside, um, it includes the instructions, which are in very good condition. It includes the game software, so there's the instruction manual. Okay. The game cartridge itself is in excellent condition with no fading on the label. Uh, there's no sort of real discoloration on the shell itself of the cartridge. And for some people, uh, some collectors, uh, having the, for some reason, the AC adapter warning notice. I don't know why this comes with the games, but it does. It gives you a bit of a, a warning of it. So the Keikoku uh, Oshirase. And, uh, and uh, also... Uh, the uh, postcard that will be mailed back to Capcom, which is specific to the game, um, because you'll see there that it actually has um, um, the uh, the actual game code on the top of it. And this would be for uh, joining up to the mailing list and giving feedback on the game. So, yes, for example, Kono Soft or No, Cancel What. So what do you think about this game? What's your uh, uh, feelings or your, uh, uh, you know, sort of impressions of the game? So um, all these things boost value for collectors. For me, I'm not that bothered in that kind of stuff. As long as the instructions are intact and in reasonable condition, that the, the cartridge is in uh, reasonable condition, I, I basically judge the price of uh, or the value of the game based on that, but I'm by far a mint games collector or even an excellent condition games collector. So on Yahoo uh, auctions, 
um, games, this game of this condition with everything that this has goes for about 12,000 yen roughly. Um, I've seen this on Suragaya, a very good uh, retailer of uh, this kind of stuff in Japan. They're selling this for about 15,500 Japanese yen at the moment, so a little bit more on the expensive side, I feel that. But it gives you a bit of an idea of the value. Now, in Miyako, where for at least one more week I still live, uh, there is a second-hand Chuko store, uh, Second Street, but um, usually they have nothing of any interest in there for me, and I very rarely go in there, to be honest with you. And there have only been two occasions where I've found stuff that I've been looking for, and this was one of those occasions. And it was in the display case, and I saw it there and I thought, wow, if that checks out, that's an amazing price for it. So, like I say, it's not mint. So how much was it? Well, it wasn't 9,000 yen. It wasn't 6,000 yen. It was 4,200 yen, including tax. It was a very, very good bargain, I think. So it's not the world's most expensive game, uh, but I still think it's an excellent game. And uh, I don't feel I'm going to get a chance to play it before I move, but I'm looking forward to plugging this in in my new location here in Japan. So um, I'm now going to tell you all about how you can get access to things that are locked away in display cabinets that you might think, oh, what do I say to the tainin san, the shopkeeper or the, the staff to uh, have a look at something and decide whether to buy it. So let's go for it. OK, so imagine that you're in a shop. You can see the game right in front of you, but it's locked away. And the tainin san is right there and you have a question. So you can say, oh, sumimasen. Choto shisumo ga arimasu, or just sumimasen, that's perfectly fine as well. And you can see it literally there, you can point to it. What you want to say is something like, Sore o misete kudasai? Sore o misete kudasai? And can I look at that? Okay, you can literally point to it. Um, you'll be understood and they'll be like, yep, sure, they'll probably take it out of the display case and show you. But what if you've got a whole bunch of games in front of you and uh, you're not sure uh, they're going to understand which one you're pointing to? So what you can do is you can basically uh, say the name of the game. Now, obviously, this can get a little bit difficult if the name is in Japanese. You'll need to know. It. But say, for example, here we've got Donald in Maui Mallard. Um, so it's, the title in Japanese is a little bit different. But if you can read Hiragana and Katakana or you can approximate the pronunciation of something, you're good to go. So in this case, we can see the game is actually called Donaldo Duck no Marimarado. OK, so if you can say something like that or you can approximate the pronunciation or something like Story to Fighter to Tabo, OK, or Tabo. <laughs> Sorry, that's probably really bad pronunciation, actually. But if you can approximate roughly what you're looking for, for example, I mean, obviously some are a lot easier, uh, easy now than Super Mario. OK, Super Mario World. OK, if you can approximate it, you can you can probably get there. Of course, obviously, if the name is fully in Japanese. Good luck with that. I can't teach you all every single game name. But what I can say for this one is I'll be able to say Donaldo Daco no Marimara. Ma <laughs> I can't get it right myself now. <laughs> Donaldo Daco. <laughs> OK, gambate veki ne. Donaldo Daco no. Marimara to o misete kudasai. Yeah, I did it. <laughs> so, remember, I'm not pretending that I'm fluent in Japanese, okay? I'm getting reasonably good, but I'm not fluent, okay? I still make mistakes. You've got to make mistakes to learn, okay? So, you can basically say, please show me, and then you're good to go. And then you can ask all those other questions. Setsume shoko arimasu ka? Kasetto no jotai wa? Ka, those kinds of things, okay? So you can combine all these things together. Uraman wa do desu ka, okay? You know, it opens up all those kinds of things. Okay, so we've dealt with the situation of where a game is right in front of you. But what about if it's in a display case that is over there? You know, it's not immediately within, uh, you know, sort of pointing distance. So what we need to say is that something is in a display case. So what's the word for a display case in Japanese? Well, it's chinretsu dana. Chinretsu dana, okay? Now, how do we say that something is in a display case? Well, there's two ways of saying it. The easiest way is to say chinretsu dana ni arimas. That literally means that the display case has it, okay? Now, the other way that you can say this is chinretsu dana no naka ni arimas. Chinretsu dana no naka ni 
animas, okay? So it literally means it's inside the display case. But what's inside the display case, you ask? Well, obviously, a game. So how do we say that we're interested in something in Japanese? Well, what we want to do is take the object and pair it with this phrase. Ni kyomi ga aru. Ni kyomi ga aru. Ni kyomi ga aru. Okay? And that literally means that you have an interest in something. You hold or you have an interest in something. So the object in this case is going to be game. Game. Okay? Game ni kyomi ga aru. Okay? Game ni kyomi ga aru. And that means that you have an interest in the game. Okay? Um, so, but how do we say it's in a display case? So how do we connect chinretsu uh, no naka ni arimas or chinretsu ni arimas? Okay? How do we connect that with that phrase? Well, we could literally just say the two things. We could say game ni kyomi ga aru chinretsu dana ni arimas. Okay? So you could say that. But there's a better way of connecting these two things together. Now, there are many ways to connect sentences, like in any language, Japanese, uh, when you basically want to uh, follow on with something. Some of you may know some of these, like you've got demo, which means but, shikashi, uh, which literally means however, or something like that. Uh, you can also use soshite, which means and, but that's not really quite right in this case. Oops. I made a bit of a mistake here, but I'm owning up to it. The little word that you want to use between these two clauses is kedo. And kedo, in this case, means but, so, since. It can also mean things like however, because. But in this case, we're going to use it as but. And all we have to do is say the two phrases and join them with kedo in the middle. So, for example, game ni kyomi ga aru kedo, chinretsu dana ni. Arimas. Or you can say, game ni kyomi ga aru kedo, jinretsu dana no naka ni arimas. And it's perfectly polite because the thing that makes it polite is the use of arimas at the end of that sentence or that whole phrase. There are other ways of saying this kedo thing. You can say ga or you can use uh, keredo. And there are other ways as well. But I feel that the most common way that you're going to hear this in Japanese, spoken by Japanese people and other Japanese speakers, is kedo. Okay? So that's all you got to do. And they might say something like, Doko? Doko ni arimasu ka? Doko desu ka? Where is it? And you can simply point and you can say, Asoko desu. It's over there. Or you can say, Muko desu. It's over there. Muko tends to be for things that are a lot further away. Asoko is like pointing to something that's within, say, maybe 10 metres or so from you. That Physically, both of you can see it, but it is nonetheless over there. Muko tends to mean that it's not visible, but it is over there. Okay? Those of you who are learning Japanese will know that uh, uh, the, the relation of objects to you as a speaker is quite important in Japanese. It, you'll still be understand if you get confused between them. But, uh, yeah, those who uh, have been studying Japanese will know the, the, uh, the, um, uh, the kore, sore, are uh, kind of thing and all that kind of stuff. But let's not get into that because that's more of a general Japanese video. Um, so, I hope those tips help you. I always think, just as a little aside, that when um, helping people with language, teaching language, uh, these kinds of videos, there is so much that is uh, very difficult to instruct you with because you can never predict how the other person is going to answer you. So I'm just going based off of my experience, okay? Things that I have listened out for as a, a student of Japanese myself, okay? So uh, I'm not saying that this is going to cover all eventualities, but these are the things that I have found that have helped me. So that I help, hope, I hope that these things help you as well. Okay, so I'm not trying to pretend that this is the 100% complete guide to Japanese for retro gamers, but these are just some top tips and things that are going to help you get understood. So, let's crack on with another bargain. So for me, as a retro gamer, collection is... Uh, it's a difficult word, because for me, I don't have... A ton of stuff but I believe that I have always tried to stick to some core things that I have great interest in and so in Japan I have only ever picked up games for the Super Famicom 
and the Game Boy. Those are my two systems. Uh, Game Boy including Game Boy Color, but not including Game Boy Advance. But one other system that you may have noticed behind me is the Famicom, okay, the, the NES, the Nintendo Entertainment System. Now, I never had an NES as a kid, okay? Um, I knew, strangely enough, a few people who had them, because in the UK, the NES was nowhere near as popular as uh, systems like the C64, the Commodore 64, uh, the Spectrum, uh, the Amstrad CPC, for example. Those were the 8-bit systems generally people had. Some people had BBC Micros and Electrons and Atari 8-bits, but generally those are the free 8-bit systems. And then if people stayed with gaming, they may have then gone up to an Atari ST or an Amiga or maybe a little bit later on a Mega Drive or a Super Nintendo. But the NES was not something that I personally had. Um, I always had favourable opinions of it, but uh, by that stage... Uh, I had already uh, moved over to the Amiga and then lastly the Super Nintendo, but I've always enjoyed it. So I'd always said to myself, I am not buying an NES, I'm not buying a Famicom. It would be impossible for me to do in the UK because uh, the games are way too expensive. I've got much better things to spend my money on, to be honest with you. But in Japan, it's a slightly different situation. The Famicom is abundant and yeah, you can pay a lot of money for some games, but generally speaking, it's relatively cheap. Now, the original Famicom is a beauty, but it's, to my mind, they're not very reliable. And secondly, uh, out of the box, you can only plug them in with RF. Now, I'm not one of these people in search of the best picture quality, but composite just makes things so much easier. And so here's the AV Famicom, released in 1993, and uh, basically a swan song for the Famicom here in Japan. Now, this has some benefits over the original Famicom, namely that the controller, to my mind, is improved, uh, much more comfortable dog bone shape, much more like the Super Famicom shape, and you've got, uh, obviously, external connectors so they're not wired in, and also it has composite out. And generally, the reliability of the AV Famicom is a lot better. So, complete in-box with two controllers, AV cable, and power adapter. These generally in 2023 go for about 13 to 15,000 Japanese yen these days in, in pretty good condition, which this one is. How much did I pay? Well, I found this with two controllers boxed and uh, with the AV cable and all the rest of it. And uh, here's the box. As you can see, it's not perfect, but it's, it's perfectly decent enough. Uh, I think the, oh, there's an AV cable inside of that. So how much did I pay for it? Ichiman in 10,000 yen? Nope. Did I pay uh, perhaps 5,000 yen for it? No, I didn't. Now, this is why it pays to be patient when you come to Japan. Don't buy from the first shop you go in. Don't think that only Akihabara has the stuff you're looking for. So, look around. Look around you because in a very small town up in Iwate Prefecture where I live, uh, I saw in a display case this boxed. At AV Famicom. So, what did I pay for it? 4,400 yen with tax. 4,400 yen. That's like Ichiman in uh, 10,000 yen cheaper than the average going price for these these days. So, it was a bargain and I snapped it up. Now, I've only bought a handful of physical games for this, uh, but otherwise, the EverDrive serves uh, for my uh, Famicom gaming experience. So, it pays to shop around and it pays to know a bit of Japanese where you can ask for things and come away feeling like you've represented yourself uh, nicely in the store as well, rather than just go, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> So, I want to wrap up this video with some last useful things that you can uh, use when you're trying to speak Japanese but can't quite remember, you're caught in the heat at the moment. What do you do? Well, of course, you could go, uh, um, uh, uh. That's fine, no problem with that. Uh, you'll be t perfectly excused of that. You know, don't forget Japanese people are human as well. They know what it's like. But if you want to sound a little bit more with it, shall we say, and this goes for any Japanese, there are a few useful phrases uh, that you can uh, memorize, which will help you when you're having to check something. Maybe you're looking at my hint sheet that I talked about and you're wondering, ah, uh, what do I say, kind of thing. Or maybe you're trying to remember, but you're just having a moment of reflection. What can you say? Well, uh, you can say, eto, eto, 
Eto is like, um, uh, okay. So you can use eto, okay. You can also use, uh, ano, ano, okay, ano, okay. Ano is very, uh, common. You uh, you can say, ano, eto, ano, game ni kyobi ga aru, okay. So imagine that situation. Ano, uh, setsumei shoka arimasu ka, okay. So it's very natural. Eto, Soto hako wa do desu ka? How's the box? You know, you can use that. Another one is you can use nanka. Nanka. And that's a good way of sort of basically trying to gather your thoughts. You can be like, Ano, setsumeisho nanka. Uh, do desu ka? Okay. You didn't even have to use the wa in there, did you? Because you replaced the wa with nanka. Uh, so you can say, uh, Ano, soto hako no jotai. Nanka, nanka, ah, uh, do desu ka? Okay, so it's a really natural way of being able to pause and collect your thoughts, okay? Um, okay, so, um, or you can just say, Chotto matte kudasai, ano, game ni kyomi, ah, uh, chotto matte kudasai, kyomi ga aru, okay? These are natural ways to pause and they'll understand, they may even complete the sentence for you, they'll be just like, Oh, kyomi ga aru ne? Okay. <laughs> so, so, you know, you, you, you'll figure it out, okay? But some very natural ways of just pausing for thoughts in Japanese is Eto, ano, nanka, chotto matte kudasai. It's all good. It's all good. So, they'll understand, but don't worry. You know, they're not expecting you to come across as a fluent native speaker of Japanese. Just speak slowly and clearly that's the biggest thing slowly and clearly i know what it's like i when i first came to japan three years ago i remember every single thing that i did that required me to speak was terrifying absolutely terrifying and one of the things that happens to us when we are scared or we're worried we mumble and it makes it worse because we're unsure of ourselves so we'll say things like we get very, you know, we go inside ourselves, don't we? And if we mumble, it makes it worse. So my advice to you is to say things with conviction, knowing that you're probably going to get it wrong. Don't worry. They're not going to bite your heads off. They're not going to throw you out the shop. They'll appreciate your effort, okay? Just be kind and patient with the way that you say things. That goes to anywhere in the world. This is not something special you have to do just because you're in Japan. Just do it because that's the kind of person you are, okay? You know, let yourself shine through in your interactions with people all around the world, okay? But don't do it just because you're expecting that the Japanese are going to expect you to be supremely polite and nice to them. Do it because you're a decent human being wanting to be decent to other decent human beings in this world. That's my advice. Hold that in your heart. Say things with conviction, patience and kindness and you'll go a long way in life in general. So, yeah, if you go into a shop and you're like, oh, what do I say? Uh, ano, game, game ni kyomi ga aru Okay, it's fine. They'll understand you. They'll probably actually be just like, Whoa, jōzu desu ne? Totto mo jōzu desu ne? Ano nihongo, nanen kurai benkyo shimasu ka? And you'll be just like, Eh, eh, nanka, 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 no. What did you just say to me? Because <laughs> that's what I got. Because I would practice these phrases like down pat when I would go to stores or before I go to stores. I go in there and it would all come out sura sura really fluently like a game of ikkyo mi ga aru keto ano chinresu dana no naka ni arimas and I'll be just like who honto ni ano nan you know ni hon de wa ano nan de ni sundimasu ka how long have you lived in Japan because they're just like wow your Japanese is really good so and then you then it'll be just like eh wakari masen deshita I didn't understand okay so <laughs> so don't worry Okay, I'm going to cut the video there now because I feel that I've covered enough. Don't forget that everything I have talked about in this video is available to download from my uh, Patreon. It starts from $2 a month and you will have the pleasure 
of depending on the tier that you join of early access exclusive videos that patrons only get and the warm fuzzy feeling that you get from supporting an artist that's nearing 40 years old that is trying to make her way in the world of manga here in Japan but anyway that's it for me I hope you've enjoyed this video I know that I've got stuff to do now I've got to go and help a friend move a fridge. Well, not me physically, because I've still got the broken wrist situation, but uh, I'm uh, at least lending my van. So let's get on with life. I don't know what I'm saying there. What do I mean by that? Anyway, gambate ne? Gambate. Do your best. <laughs> and I'll see you soon. Take care. Peace. You've got the heavy bit then, Bayer. Ha 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 ha